everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell with News and Views on Thursday, September 29th, 2022. This is News and Views from the Nefarium. And as you can tell, the Nefarium has been very busy. Uh, I want to talk today about the Nord Stream uh, pipeline attack. But before we do, I just want to remind everybody there is no vid chat either this Friday or next Friday. The reason for that, my friends, is I'm having, I'm expecting some company to come in. Um, I'm going to be getting ready for that. Of course, Catherine Fitz uh, to do her salary report with me for the first time face to face in years. Um, I also have my sister and possibly some other people coming in, so I'm going to be prepping my otherwise terribly cluttered, messy, and dirty house for the visitors. So please keep your eyes peeled on the schedule. It's likely to change a lot this month. This month I seem to get slammed, and that's certainly the case this year. Anyway, the Nefarium has been busy. Uh, I wanted to talk on kind of a twin track today about not only the Nord Stream pipeline, but also the uh, Hurricane Ian in Florida, which uh, I hate to say it, folks. I, I think this is an example of a classic example of weaponized weather. Uh, it seems to me a little bit politically too convenient. But in any case, I'm going to confine myself to the Nord Stream pipeline because in in reading the various stories reporting on it, I began to get a very, very bad feeling as to who the potential actor or actors may be. And I did not find any good article until one of the regular article contributors here, we'll just call him E.G., sent me an article that, as far as I'm concerned, very briefly, but in my opinion, very adequately, outlines the major suspects. He leaves one out that I want to talk about. But um, let, me, let me preface this, and I'm going to read some of this article, uh, not very much of it for you, but I will reference it so that you can read the article for yourself. Because the other interesting thing about the article is that it suggests something, and we'll get back to that as well. Because if the suggestion is true, then we may be looking at what I'm calling the beginning of the Mafia War. But anyway, I doubt it. The, the background is this. I think you can safely rule out any of the European powers or nations as having been behind the sabotage. Certainly, I don't think Germany was. Germany has no reason to do so. Its economy is suffering with the cutoff of energy. And let's be honest here, folks, uh, fellow Germans, this is mostly the responsibility not of Vladimir Putin, nor even of whoever the saboteurs may have been. It's mostly the responsibility of Angela Merkel and her nutty green policies in shutting down Germany's nuclear uh, power industry and getting rid of coal. Wake up, Germany. The, the green agenda is not serving you or anybody else. Uh, I, I sincerely doubt it was Italy or France for very similar reasons. Certainly not the U.K., uh, the U.K. is probably in the worst shape, economically speaking. The only country in Europe that I would suspect might have a motive for doing so would be Poland. Uh, as you know, Poland uh, and, and its former Minister of Defense, Radek Sikorsky, who incidentally, I knew Mr. Sikorsky uh, as a kind of an acquaintance, you know, just somebody that you say hello to, uh, he and I both were there at Oxford at the same time, and uh, we went to the same college, and we did speak a little bit from time to time. But uh, Sikorsky recently tweeted out, you know, bravo to the United States for shutting down and sabotaging the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Well, you know, the recent, the recent fracas between Germany and Poland, Poland wanting war reparations from Germany. Uh, this has 
of course, not help matters at all. And Poland is the only one that I can think of that would have a political motive, a powerful political motive for keeping Germany and Russia apart and keeping Germany off of Russian energy supplies because, of course, that would once again put the two countries in the squeeze on Poland. So I think it's safe to say that you can rule out Europe as being behind this event with the exception possibly of Poland. So EG sent me an article, and the article almost perfectly sums up what I think may be going on here in terms of culprit. The only culprit that I think they're missing is one, and the, and the modus operandi suggested or hinted at in the article is very powerful. The article's titled, How to Stage a Sabotage, Le Faire Farewell, Fake History, Fake Science by Deep State Design. It's by Charles Johnson. And I want to read just a few of the opening paragraphs, and then I want to summarize the rest of the article. In the future, quote, only the only Russian gas allowed into Europe will flow through the Ukraine and Turkey plan accordingly. Everyone is talking about the sabotage of Nord Stream 2 and floating their pet conspiracies. I like to look to the geopolitical facts and to history. If you read Nicole Perloff's masterly, This is How They Tell Me the World Ends, you know, just as I do, that the culprit of cyber attacks are often done with a degree of plausible deniability. So number one, he's telling you this may ultimately have been a cyber attack which is an interesting thing because it immediately made me think of something else that he also raises in his article. Now, I know that there are articles out there all about explosions and so on and so forth, uh, but patience. Let me, let me explain why he's talking about cyber attacks in a moment. Anyway, to continue... I've enjoyed the fantasy that France was capable of pulling off such an operation. They aren't, right? Right? But gee, who would really benefit from the destruction of Nord Stream 2? Listen, folks. Could it be another consumer of Russian gas like, I don't know, China? So qui bono from the pipeline attack? She bono. He's now the only customer for Russian gas. From February 4th, 2022, Russia and China sign a 30-year gas deal via new pipeline to settle in euros. Gazprom, which has a monopoly on Russian gas exports by pipeline, agreed to supply Chinese state energy major CNTC with 20 billion cubic meters of gas a year, the Russian firm and a Beijing-based industry official said. Just this past month, China renegotiated the deal and this time agreed to pay for the Russian gas in rubles and won. Did you catch that? The currency moved from euros to rubles and won. The dream of the Duganist Eurasian sphere is at hand. The world's largest energy supplier and the world's largest energy consumer linking arm in arm. And folks, I find that incredibly plausible. Okay, I do find China involvement, particularly via a cyber attack on a pipeline, to be eminently plausible. And let's remember that there was a pipeline attack in this country that was shut down, and apparently it was, it was due to a quote-unquote computer glitch and there was nobody to hand that knew how to operate the pipeline through the old analog methods. So, I, again, I think, you know, I've, I've highlighted these types of events over the years. I think that many of them are heralding the fact that we're looking at a covert war taking place. But we'll get back to that. Then the article continues by mentioning the next possible culprit. He says, quote, or perhaps it's the United States and NATO who long to put Europe under America's energy security shield. From February 7th, 2022, 
Biden states there will no longer be a Nord Stream 2. The reporter asks, how will you do that exactly? Biden smirks and then says, I promise you we will be able to do that, unquote. Indeed, the recent problems or sabotage of Nord Stream 2 and their forecasted problems recall a similar effort roughly 40 years ago, which allegedly paralyzed the Siberian pipeline and caused havoc. Now, at this point, folks, the author spends the rest of the article talking about something that I've blogged about and that I've talked about publicly, and that was the so-called Farewell case. Farewell was the code name for a mole inside the technical branch of the KGB that was being run by French intelligence. And this mole was supplying French intelligence with the shopping list, the technology theft list, that the KGB was interested in stealing from the West. And during a summit, I've even written about this in my book, The Third Way, during a summit between French President Francois Mitterrand and then U.S. President Ronald Reagan, President Mitterrand shared this intelligence information directly with President Reagan. And Reagan was, of course, delighted that the French were running a mole inside the technical branch of the KGB. And he put a member of the American National Security Council onto this. The, the man's name was Gus Weiss, W-E-I-S-S. And Weiss decided that what they were going to do was they were going to fulfill one of the shopping list items, which was software, to run their pipelines. They were going to fulfill it by allowing the Russians to steal tampered with software. Now, this incidentally, folks, is during the same time that you have the Promise Inslaw software going on, okay? So I've always suspected that there's a massive link between these two stories. In any case, the United States allowed the Soviets to steal defective software, and that defective software, in turn, was used to cause a colossal explosion on that Trans-Siberian natural gas pipeline. And the explosion was even visible from outer space. And the reason I suspect that, that uh, Mr. Johnson is onto something here is that Everybody is maintaining that this explosion may have, the explosions that shut down Nord Stream, may have been uh, placed there by sabotage teams. That certainly is possible. But I'm leaning, like the author of this article, to a cyber attack that actually shut down the pipeline. Would China be capable of such a thing? Yes. Would the United States be capable of such a thing? Yes. Would even the Polish be capable of such a thing? Well, very probably. So I think you're looking at a, a modus operandi here that's been used before. I think you can safely rule out the Russians. But there's another player here that's not mentioned in the article, and I do want to mention that, and that's the Hochklaus von Bloschwab, or as I like to call him, the Davos set, the, the World Economic Forum, and so on and so forth. Would they be capable of doing it? Well, yes, but for two entirely different motivations, and either motivation may be in play. The first motivation is they're a bunch of ideologues, and they're nuts, they're insane, and they want to get rid of all reliance on, on petrochemicals and, and so on and so forth, and of course natural gas certainly falls into that bill. But the other reason, I think, is a much more subtle, sinister reason, and that is if you're the World Economic Forum, your ultimate loyalties, whether they want to, to admit it or not, but your ultimate loyalties are to a much more independent Europe under more or less German leadership. So in order for Europe to become truly an independent major actor on the geopolitical stage, Europe has to have some sort of energy independence, both from Russia and from the United States. So I suspect that this may be a, a way of nudging Europe in that direction. Whether or not Europe, and particularly Germany, will respond by opening back up their nuclear power plants, this is really the only way 
that they're going to be able to get around this problem with current technology remains to be seen. So those, I think, are the major players here. Now, I'm suggesting that you're also looking at the beginning of something that I've been talking about and warning about for some time, and that's taking the gloves off, the Mafia War. Um, I suspect that you're going to see more and more of these types of, tax, of attacks. I think there's a strong possibility, for example, that the food plant attacks, the refinery fires, and so on, going on in the United States and to a lesser extent Canada, may be covert warfare being executed by Russian sleeper agents. That, that's an entirely plausible possibility, given the fact that the Russian leadership now views itself as being involved in a de facto undeclared war with the United States and NATO. And if that's the case, they're going to take the gloves off. Now, I strongly suspect that that war is going to take rather the shape of tar more selective targeting. In other words, they're going to target the leadership class of the West for assassination. But I think you're looking with the Nord Stream pipeline attack as, as the first real signal that the covert wars are on in earnest, regardless of who perpetrated the attack, be it the Chinese, be it the Americans, be it the uh, Bloschwab crowd of the World Economic Forum. So something to watch, folks. Watch for these types of patterns. Um, if you find any, please share articles with me. I'm always interested in finding out about this sort of thing. Anyway, remember to keep checking the schedule um, for the vid chats through this month. Uh, this month's schedule is a bit upside down. Uh, the vid chats are all scheduled toward the end of, of the upcoming month of October rather than f toward the beginning uh, because of the company. That may change at the last minute, so please keep uh, keep your eyes on the schedule and keep watching the forum for any last-minute scheduling change announcements. Anyway, that's it. We'll see you on the flip side, everybody. Bye-bye, and God bless.